Hello and welcome to this lecture on the monoamine hypothesis of depression. This is Dr. Nicholas Hatcher and in this presentation we will examine the key monoamines on a biochemical level, exploring the synthesis, function, and receptor site activity of each of the monoamines. Afterwards, we will look at the implications and limitations of this hypothesis and its ability to predict the nature and management of depression. The monoamine hypothesis of depression states that a reduction in monoamines, namely serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, cause the symptoms of depression. Since its conceptualization, the monoamine hypothesis has expanded to include the influence of cofactors, precursors, process enzymes, or enzymes related to the synthetic pathway, receptor activity, degradation enzymes, and intracellular processes in addition to the monoamines themselves. This hypothesis is particularly important in the history of depression management, as most currently available antidepressant drugs function to increase monoamines. More on that in the implications section. The first monoamine we will discuss is serotonin. Serotonin is synthesized in the Rafe nucleus located in the midbrain. Taking a look at the synthetic pathway, tryptophan, or TRY, is converted into 5-hydroxytryptophan, or 5-HTP, via tryptophan hydroxylase, or TRYOH. 5-HTP is then converted into 5-hydroxytryptamine, or 5-HT, or serotonin, under the influence of L-amino acid decarboxylase, or AADC. Serotonin as you will see with all monoamines, is moved into the vesicular monoamine transporter, or VMAT, for transport to the synapse. One of the primary ways serotonin is degraded is by monoamine oxidase, or MAO. Serotonin is broken down into 5-hydroxyidoleacetic acid, or 5-HIAA. Coincidentally, 5-HIAA concentrations are reduced in the CSF of patients with depression and especially with suicidality, indicating a deficiency of serotonin in depression. Overall, serotonin deficiency is linked with an increase in negative affect, where there is an upregulation of negative symptoms such as depressed mood, guilt, disgust, loneliness, among others. Additionally, Serotonin is linked with several key areas of derangement noted in depression. These include memory and cognition, response to aversive stimuli, alterations in behavioral inhibition related to delayed gratification, and rumination, which involves the movement from one thought to another. Serotonin produces a bias towards optimistic valuations. It can be said that serotonin inhibits chains of thoughts predicted to lead to negative affective states. There's some interesting evidence emerging that the gut is actually a significant site of serotonin synthesis and metabolism. One study revealed that roughly 90% of the body's serotonin is synthesized in the gut. Gut microbiota have been found to influence tryptophan metabolism and ultimately the serotonergic system. These findings are further described by the gut-brain microbiome hypothesis of depression. There are seven serotonin receptor families. Within these families, there are a total of 14 currently known serotonin receptor subtypes. I've listed the families for you here with the associated type, mechanism, and potential. I'll note here for those of you unfamiliar the type refers to the type of signaling system that translates a signal from the outside to the inside of the cell. For instance, G proteins are a family of proteins that act as molecular switches inside the cell. The mechanism may involve either a second messenger system molecule like cyclic adenosine monophosphate or CAMP, inositol triphosphate or IP3, or diacylglycerol or DAG, or depolarization of the membrane. CAMP is a common second messenger used for signal transduction, i.e. 
transferring messages from the outside to the inside of the cell. Serotonin receptors are located in a variety of locations. Most importantly, serotonin receptors are located diffusely in pre- and postsynaptic neurons in the central nervous system, the microglia, astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, platelets, and the gut. As a few side notes, interference with platelet serotonin receptor activity can influence bleed risk, which is why selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, as well as serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, carry a risk of bleeding. Gut serotonin receptor alterations can inform the side effect of GI upset and nausea with antidepressants targeting serotonin receptors. Of the 14 serotonin receptor subtypes, probably the most studied is 5-HT1A, 5-HT1B, and 5-HT2A. Here I provided the effect, whether agonism or antagonism, that will lead to an antidepressant effect. It's interesting to note here that polymorphism of the 5-HT1A receptor translates to an increased risk of depression due to altered receptor expression and reduced responsiveness to antidepressive treatments. Also, the 5-HT1B receptor is best known for its role in regulating aggressive and impulsive behavior, but also plays a role in modulating depression. The 5-HT1B receptor is less responsive in depressed patients, suggesting reduced expression or desensitization. The next monoamine, dopamine, is synthesized in the substantia nigra and ventral tegmental area in the midbrain. L-phenylalanine, an amino acid from the diet, abbreviated PA, is converted into tyrosine, or TYR, via phenylalanine hydroxylase, or PAH. Tyrosine is converted into dihydroxyphenylalanine, or DOPA, under the influence of tyrosine hydroxylase. DOPA is then converted into dopamine under the influence of L-amino acid decarboxylase, or AADC. Dopamine is broken down by monoamine oxidase, or MAO, and catechol O-methyltransferase, or COMT, into homovanillic acid, or HVA. Reuptake can occur via the dopamine transporter, or DAT. Looking back, tyrosine can also be converted into tyramine, or TA, under the influence of tyrosine decarboxylase, or TDC. Tyramine is then broken down into 4-hydroxyphenylacetaldehyde, or 4-HPAA, by monoamine oxidase, or converted into dopamine under the influence of the cytochrome P450 2D6 system. This reaction becomes important when considering the mechanism of action and side effect profile of monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs. One of the most notable effects of dopamine deficiency, apart from depressed mood, is anhedonia, or the inability to experience pleasure from activities that are usually found to be enjoyable. Additional alterations that may be found with a dopamine deficiency occur in the domains of motivation, reward, enthusiasm, and self-confidence. Dopamine receptors are divided into two families, D1-like and D2-like. The D1-like family is GS-coupled, and activation results in an increase in intracellular cyclic adenosine monophosphate by activating adenylcyclase. The D2-like family is GI-coupled, and activation results in a decrease in intracellular cyclic adenosine monophosphate by inhibiting adenylcyclase. Dopamine receptors, like serotonin receptors, are located throughout the body. A primary consideration for psychiatric implications are the four dopamine pathways in the central nervous system. The mesolimbic system is associated with pleasure, reward, and goal-directed behavior. The mesocortical pathway is associated with motivational and emotional responses. The nigrostriatal pathway is associated with coordination of movement 
as part of the basal ganglia motor loop and is implicated in extrapyramidal symptoms that are seen as a side effect of antipsychotics. The tuberoinfundibular pathway is involved in the secretion of prolactin by the pituitary gland and maternal behavior. The final monoamine we will discuss is norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is synthesized in the locus coruleus of the midbrain. Dopamine is converted into norepinephrine under the influence of dopamine beta-hydroxylase, or DBH. Norepinephrine is degraded by phenylethanolamine N-methyltransferase, or PNMT, into epinephrine. Reuptake can occur via the norepinephrine transporter, or NET. Some of the key areas that norepinephrine influence include energy or drive, arousal, memory, sleep-wake, and pain threshold. Again, norepinephrine receptors are diffuse, like with serotonin and dopamine receptors. I provided this table showing the key mechanisms and functions of each receptor. You'll see the several functions that norepinephrine has based on its receptor site. The key take-home message here is that norepinephrine is involved in the fight, flight, and freeze response. Two considerations in the biosynthetic pathways are the influence of iron stores and folate metabolism. Iron deficiency results in a decrease in tyrosine hydroxylase activity, ultimately resulting in a reduction in dopamine synthesis. In one case-controlled study of 192 females, the mean ferritin level in participants with depression, 34.7% of the study population, was lower compared to healthy controls. The odds of depression was increased by 1.92 when ferritin is reduced. The research in this area is not strong, therefore routine ferritin measurement and treatment is not recommended, but this may be a consideration especially in the female of reproductive age, which is where most of the data comes from. It is even suggested that the degree of ferritin and iron deficiency influences mood prior to influencing hemoglobin with a resultant overt iron deficiency anemia. Another abnormality that may contribute to alterations in monoamine synthesis is a polymorphism of the gene methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, or MTHFR. MTHFR is a key enzyme of folate metabolism. It converts 5,10-methylene tetrahydrofolate, abbreviated 5,10-methylene THF, into 5-methyltetrahydrofolate, abbreviated 5-methyl-THF, and participates in folate and homocysteine conversion correlated to DNA methylation. As a consequence of polymorphism of MTHFR, reduction of MTHFR enzymatic activity would cause impaired methylation as well as deficiency of folate. The link between this process and monoamine synthesis is tetrahydrobiopterin, abbreviated BH4, which is an important cofactor for tryptophan and tyrosine hydroxylase. Thus, a depletion of BH4 due to folate deficiency will result in a depletion of monoamines. MTHFR polymorphism can be identified through genetic testing that typically also incorporates an analysis of the cytochrome P450 pathway. In this population, treatment with 7.5 to 15 milligrams of L-methylfolate results in a statistically significant improvement in depression symptoms over an average of three months of treatment. According to some studies, these patients respond better to L-methylfolate if the C-reactive protein is elevated. This suggests an underlying inflammatory phenomenon and is further explained by the inflammatory hypothesis of depression. So, according to the monoamine hypothesis of depression, depression is caused by a deficiency of the monoamines serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. This deficiency may be related to an issue in the synthesis, transport, degradation, reuptake, receptor activity, or intracellular processes 
surrounding the monoamines. Ferritin deficiency and MTHFR polymorphism may influence the synthesis of monoamines and therefore may contribute to the symptoms of depression. Based on the known functions of the key monoamines, phenotypes of depression can be identified. A global decrease in positive affect can be correlated with a deficiency of dopamine and norepinephrine. A global increase in negative affect can be correlated with a decrease in serotonin and norepinephrine. The monoamine hypothesis of depression is helpful in understanding the mechanism of action of the key antidepressants currently available on the market. I've included the four key antidepressant classes, namely selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, or SNRIs, tricyclic antidepressants, or TCAs, and monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs. The SSRIs, SNRIs, and TCAs all block CERT, the serotonin transporter. SNRIs and TCAs block NET, the norepinephrine transporter. MAOIs inhibit the function of monoamine oxidase, which results in less degradation of dopamine and norepinephrine. There are additional antidepressant drugs available, sometimes referred to as adjunctive antidepressants, that are a little more complex in their mechanism and are beyond the scope of this lecture. Likewise, there are antidepressant effects that can be derived from the use of antipsychotics, particularly second-generation antipsychotics, which influence a variety of serotonin receptors. One way to examine the strength of a hypothesis is by the ability to make predictions based on the hypothesis. For instance, if a monoamine deficiency is in fact the cause of depression, predictably, we should be able to replace these monoamines and improve depression. This happens, but there are two key findings that shake the foundation or strength of this hypothesis. One, it takes several weeks to see improvement, often in the range of two to four weeks. And two, 30% of patients treated with antidepressants remain refractory to treatment. Additionally, the monoamine hypothesis does not explain the chronic course of depression. There must be factors that perpetuate the monoamine deficiency seen in depression. These findings suggest that there must be more to the picture apart from a simple deficit in monoamines. This graph just provides a visual of the rise in monoamines over time with antidepressant treatment and the correlated reduction in depressive symptoms. The rise in monoamine levels follows closely with neuroplastic changes noted in the brain, which is further explained by the neurotrophic hypothesis of depression. Here are my references. Thank you for listening.